Welcome back everyone. Hope you guys are all having yourselves a day. This is episode 11 of a 13 part series where I take you through every step of creating an attention grabbing nightclub after movie slash party video. Today we're talking about why I've been using the glide cam for the past five years instead of DJI's latest electronic gimbals through the eyes of a concert videographer slash nightclub video guy. First things first, let's talk about price. This gimbal right here, 200 bucks at DJI. New electronic gimbal is anywhere from 800 to 1,000, and if you buy it used, it could have some problems you don't know about just yet. Utilizing this is gonna help beginners get smoother shots straight from the start. For number two, we gotta talk about batteries. You can shoot for the entire day, or if you're on tour for multiple days in a row without having to worry about a charge. There's no apps, there's there's no updates, you don't have to worry about your phone being charged, and you definitely don't have to worry about leaving your batteries at home because it doesn't take any. This is crazy important because by chance that you do leave them at home, now there's no more steady shots for the rest of the day or until you get back home, which basically means you're going handheld, so make the best of it. And probably my favorite thing about the steady cam is that it's durable, it's absolutely not made of any wires at all, meaning you can kind of just throw it there, leave it up against a speaker, go and take some photos real quick. If it's raining in the back of a pickup truck, you don't have to worry about it. If it's in the back of a tour bus van, they can throw suitcases on it and nothing's gonna happen to it. Adding to that, you don't have to pack it up every time, meaning it's ready at a moment's notice for you to slide the camera on and or just walk around with the gimbal like this. I simply can't stress how important it is to just be able to have your camera sitting on your shoulder ready to record at a moment's notice because if something funny happens with the artist or they run into somebody they know and you got to capture a crucial moment, there's no time to set it up on a gimbal. So this is crazy important to me. It's also incredibly easy to set up and balance super fast, which is great for someone like me because I sometimes need to take photos super quickly. So I can literally pull this lever, click this button on the left hand side, and I'm ready to go and take photos, which sometimes isn't always the case with an electronic gimbal. If you're on tour, for example, especially with a smaller artist starting off, there isn't always a photo and a video guy. So switching between the two fast is super important. And I love that once you have this thing balanced with a super wide lens, I never have to mess around with rebalancing it again, only when I travel across the world and need to pack this thing down for a suitcase. But if you're doing a show one night at a club and then a festival the next day, you can just put the camera on and you're ready to go. There's also no micro jitters with this thing, so you never have to worry about that messing up your shot. And the final thing would have to be that it's gonna give you a lot more of a natural looking shot. It's not gonna be perfectly steady like a Ronin or an electronic gimbal, for example. Oh, and when you're at festivals and you need that little extra height to get above the crowd, this is great. This, this is really it. Just being able to move it around like this, like that. It's perfect. So those are some of the reasons why I prefer a Steadicam over a gimbal, but these things also aren't perfect. They have their flaws, but we're gonna talk about that after we learn how to balance it real quick. Now, that being said, whenever I need a smooth shot, I'm using this setup. I never have to do that rebalancing like I just did. I can slide the camera on and I'm ready to go. For me, that setup is the VideoMic Pro, the Sony a7S III, and this lens, the 14 to 24 millimeters. This is always my go-to setup because the Sony a7S III has 12,800 ISO, making it great for low light. It also has in-body image stabilization. Added with the Steadicam makes it incredible. The 14 to 24 millimeter at F2.8 is great for me because at 40 millimeters, you're so wide that it's almost impossible to get a shaky shot, even if you trip. It really feels like you're just gliding. I'll show some shots of this environment. I'm actually setting up for a music video, just waiting on the client, you know how that goes. Now that we're approaching the end of the video, I wanted to talk about that the Steadicam is not better than the gimbal. They both have their flaws and each is used for a different reason. So you gotta know their limitations. Now, if you're gonna shoot in a windy environment, your Steadicam is gonna get blown around. Remember, it's counter weighting the top so that wind is gonna push your gimbal all over the plate. Don't be like me. I showed up to a shoot on a pirate ship and my gimbal was rendered useless. So all those shots planned out, you gotta creatively think and think of new ones. Also trying to put a 50 millimeter on the glide cam, forget about it. Tighter focal ranges are gonna be used with the Ronin. You're also gonna have to rely on autofocus which becomes much easier the wider you go, hence why I have the 14 to 24 on my gimbal and the a7S III which has great autofocus. Also for low to the ground shots like filming somebody walking you're gonna have to flip the gimbal completely upside down which if you need a super precise shot I just way rather do that with a Ronin so there are some tips on how to balance the steady cam and a lot of the reasons why I still use it for concerts
concert and nightclub recaps five years later. All right, if you guys enjoyed episode 11, make sure to check out the entire playlist right here and make sure to check out the next episode where we talk about sound design. Cool, that's that. I'll catch you guys next week. Peace.